should be live. What's happening, guys? Um, one, one view. I hope that music's low. Let me know if that's too, if you can even hear it. Um, I'm starting a series on KSP Space Program. A little, um, a little how to run your own space program from home, basically. I get used to it, understand it a little better with all these missions going on. We saw SpaceX complete theirs recently, so I'm going to actually build up to doing something like what SpaceX has just done, and then we're going to actually go beyond it. So for anyone who's excited about space exploration, the current privatized space race, just um, space in general, rocket science, if you're interested in it, and you're, um, you want to understand it a little bit better while having some fun with just yourself or the family, this is way more than a game. Some people have seen me on it already, but Kerbal Space Program, it is legitimately a space simulation. So, we're legitimately jumping straight in. We're going to start a game. Like I say, we're going to build up to what SpaceX has kind of done with some things on the side. And then just legitimately go beyond it. We're going to run our own space program um, using the simulation. So, I've got one here that's got zero flight, zero contracts. It's basically just been started. We've done nothing. So, we're going to load that. And um, this is basically just the first one's going to be a general guide of how you can get going. Um, basically, you just come to this, you'll get a little guy at the top tells you blah, 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 what to do. Use different complexes, different things you can do from research and development to the tracking station of all your vessels. To building a vertical vessel, building a horizontal vessel that will use a runway. You can see our runway and our launch pad aren't very good at the moment. So we'll have to build up, we'll have to gain reputation, gain science points and earn money. We're starting with 25 grand. So if we go to mission control, you can see the first things they're just asking us to do is basically gather scientific data, launch our first vessel escape the atmosphere, and then orbit curbing. Well, SpaceX has just took some civilians into orbit, and we said we're going to build up to SpaceX's orbit. So there's a, there's a three-star mission that we're building up to straight away. Now, we're not, we've got four days, five hours, 58 minutes. Bear in mind, if you turn the game off, that clock stops. It only keeps going if you stay on the game. Um, you can actually run the simulation on an always-on machine and just time it right so you've actually you, you never time lapse the game if you was to do it properly and what's happening xrp to the moon you know this you know this oh the game's epic mate the game is epic like i say it's more than just a game woof dodge woof more than just a game it's a simulation so let's get started some scientific data and launch our first vessel so I'm going to gather scientific data because I want to do this. I'm going to mm -hmm. do that. Launch our first vessel. Yeah, why not? Two missions taken. So we're going to see what we've got available for what we can build and launch on the first mission to get them two missions completed. Here's our other guy. He's going to explain everything to you as well. So if you're playing on your own game, you might want to read that, listen to him. Take it all in. Don't rush into it unless you're um, confident you can figure it out on your own. Now, science is just that. But I can't just bring that out. So let's put a pod out. And let's put one of them on the side of it. And let's launch it. We're not going to launch it. It's got no engine. It's got no fuel. It's just a pod with a with a scientific device on the side. Um, it's going to allow us to do science on the launch pad. So it's on the launch pad. We're just going to observe the goo. Oh, look at that. Got a bit of science there. For plus free science if we, if we keep it. So we're going to keep it. We're gonna recover the vessel. Just, we're just. So we've got three signs for that. Four signs total. Next. Nice, nice.
total reputation for no gain for Jebediah is just a pilot. But if we come down here now, we've got notifications. Um, a recently accomplished our space program of attracted contributions from organizations. We perform one of our first experiments at home, so that's that done. Gavin scientific data from Kirby completion of the, the, the mission, extra little bit on top. So if we'd have done that without the completion of the mission, we maybe we wouldn't have necessarily got as much. Now we've still got a launch a vessel. So we're gonna go on that now. And actually build this out. We're gonna remove the scientific because it was um if you're gonna put scientific experiments on a vessel, you need to remember that you go in aerodynamics. So you're gonna to have to put them at equilibrium. They'd either have to be three or four or two, you know, like you would fins or boosters. It's got to be um, symmetric. So we're gonna to go to utility. We need a parachute for Jeb to come back down. No fuel tanks yet. We haven't done the research. Not that we couldn't. But we're not going to just jump into that. We just want to get this done and earn some money. Earn some, earn some research. Reputation points, should I say. We're going to look at the crew. And it's just Jeb going up on his own. Now, if you look at the bottom right below me. It's actually behind me at the moment. But let me just add a load. And they'll come up above me. See them coming above me now. They're stages. And you see how the, the, the parachute and the rocket are on the same one? You don't want that. You want the rocket. So the first time you press space on the launch pad, that's going to go off and the rocket will blast. The second time you press it, the parachute goes off. So we can remove all them other ones now just so you can see it. Because that's what's behind me, basically. Also, the notification thing. I've just realized that the notification tabs and that are behind my face. But you'll get used to it. You'll see them the minute you go on it. Gonna launch this bad boy with Jeb in it. Jebediah. Launch. Let's not play games. It's going up as high as it can, this it. Okay, there we go. That went pretty rapid that. Well, it actually went pretty high, that. Gonna kill Jeb here, or what? Are we good? No. Some people might decide to do planetary research before they put a man in a capsule and send him that eye. And actually said an unmanned one at first. Like we maybe could have took him out of the capsule. We've still got to hit the parachute. I've not pressed space to hit the parachute yet. Um, we're coming down. It's not overeating or anything. So there's no reason I can't press it. But it's not going to open until it's in thicker atmosphere. So I think it opens. This one opens at about 1500, 2000. 2,000 meters, 1,500 meters. But this is the first flight as well. There's the notifications are up there now. Instead of behind my head. There's a parachute opening. So we're getting money for land speed records. The first launch. The launch of first record. Broke land speed record. Broke land speed record. We're just getting money. Left, right and center there really. And then boom, the mission completion on top because we click the mission in mission control. You'll always get extra money. You get money for doing almost anything off the program. But if you do it as an actual mission on the side, you'll get extra money as well as the star reputation and the science. So it's it's always good. If you're doing something, if you're sending a satellite around the moon and there's a mission there that says we want a satellite around the moon, you might as well just pick it up as a mission and be like, yeah, I'm, well, I was going to throw a satellite around the moon anyway. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll send one around for you kind of thing. That's all you're really doing. And now we've landed. Boom. First flight. Successful. Jeb's buzzing. Going to do an EVA, Jeb. Get me some extra dough. 
I don't know whether it will. It'll be the first. Oh. Whoa, there he goes, the lad. There he goes. We're going to board. We're going to do a crew report. We'll get some signs for crew report. We get some. Um, and we're going to keep it because we're recovering him. And recover the vessel. Boom, we're off to a flying start, mate. Off to a flying start. We started with 25 grand. We've done two missions. We've now got 111. Thousand pounds with 17 signs there. Oh, yes. What do we do with all this science and reputation? Well, here we are. Here are the reports. So, if you come to the archives, we've got all the scientific reports that you perform, all the scientific data sets. So, if you legitimately do legitimate science on any of the planets, the re scientific reports come through here. Now, some of them are obviously not going to be. What you really, what you really expect, it's just like recovery of vessel that survived the flight. There's just different, the mystery goo. It'll just tell you what the goo does. It'll be jiggling. It'll be still. It'll be frozen. But it's good. It's decent science reports. Again, teaching the kids that the, the science has got to come back, and it's more important. Um, it's more valuable the more of it you get back, i.e., um, recovering it or sending it. So here you can see we're going to go engineering 101. We're going to get all these new parts for 5 science. And we've got 17.5 science. So research. Basic rocket tray. We're getting better engines, a bigger tank. Research. We have 7.5 science left. That's 18 science. That's 15 science. Survivability. Oh, that is... We need some of that. Survivability. So there's a the heat shield. We can go higher with a heat shield. And it's got extra parachutes in here. So we can stop bigger vessels. So we're aiming. We need 50, we need another seven and a half science, basically. Um because we want We want that. We can go higher once we've got that. So, if we come back to mission control, we've got loads more missions now because the reputation's gone up. Reputation's got... At first, you just had your space program and your space goal was like, right, well, we, really, we just want to do this. We just can, can we perform science on Kerbal? Can we launch a vessel? And yeah, we did. And now everyone's like, oh, they can, they can do science. They can launch vessels. Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you test a solid fuel booster at the launch site? Can you do this? Can you do that? Now, what is, like, if you want to do these, you'd have to have a proper read of them. You get a certain amount of time to do them. And if you do do them, you'll you'll get money. Legitimately. If you fail, you'll lose money and you'll lose reputation. You, It's, it's natural. If you fail a mission, you're going to lose a bit of reputation. And depending on how big the mission is, the more reputation you will lose. Um, orbit curbing is not really the, the ones for the um, actual space agency, if you will. There's there's no failure rate. It's the privatized ones that you'll be penalized for failing. Like that one, you're gonna lose a nine grand if you fail. You only get twenty two. You get nine grand up front, twenty two grand on completion, but you'll lose the nine grand um, if you fail it, and obviously won't get the twenty two grand completion. Escape the atmosphere. Might as well take that up because it'll happen soon. What we need to do, what I want to do now, we need to look for more science, don't we? We need seven and a half science. That's the science module. So we need, everything is to do with science that can uh, radio it back. It's a transmitter. And that's a science junior. Well, we haven't launched a science junior yet. So surely we'll get science if we launch one and go and grab a bit of, bit of data from it open the doors observe the materials bay <sighs> seven and a half science mate seven and a half science mate it's like someone wrote the code for it to actually just be like there you go there's the science you need <laughs> we're gonna keep it obviously um, we're gonna do a crew report because why not? Getting one and a half science for it. We're going to keep it. And we're going to recover the vessel. 
Now, as you can see early on, it's going to be a little tedious. It's going to be some small missions. It's going to get tedious. It's going to be, could potentially get boring. So um, feel free to just launch vessels into the ocean and just do some crazy stuff at the beginning. No danger there. Let me just see what... Um, what that is... Oh, we're just gaining more money. We've got 130 grand now. We've barely even done anything. Um, the beauty is now we've got enough for that. Survivability. I've got 16 and a half science. We're going to research that. We now own the technology to create a heat shield. We know it. We researched it. We use the science to uh, reinvest it. And we bam. We know. Um, the thing is, if we got construction... Oh, yeah, we've got a decoupler as well. That's what we need, mate. That's what we need. So, boom. Boom. Um, let's remove that one. Oh, what for... Do I, I got ahead of myself then. We can't forget this. Aero... Right. It's an aerodynamics heat shield. Um, that'll do there like that. Then we're going to have the big bad boy engine. We'll see how high that gets us. I'm going to put three of these on just so it's a bit symmetrical. Parachutes, because we don't want to die. Right, da, da, da. 2,500 meters at 1,000 meters. Right, so they're the higher altitude one. So we're going to put three of them on it as well, just next to the arch. Just so we're getting Jeb back, man. We want him back, don't we? We don't want to kill the guy. We want Jeb back. Killed him too many times. So again, I'm, I'm looking behind me here to make sure that I've got that in the right order. So my parachute's going off at relatively the same time. Now, as you know, I've got some. I've got th I've got three there that come out at a higher altitude. If we come to this one, we're actually only full deployment at a thousand meters. So we could potentially split them up and have the bigger one go off first. So as this vessel's coming down, it gets like three thousand, me four thousand meters. I'll pop them as long as they're cool, and then they'll come out and spread and then we can pop them and we'll actually even do it like that we've got a separation and we've got a boost up and we don't need all them i just wanted you to see them from behind me jeb's in it no doubt always ready always ready all right let's go see how high this gets and eventually the vessel will get too big for this launch pad you can see it's pathetic bit of concrete and sand like this vest the vessel will be too big in the end you're gonna have to invest money into a launch pad to build a bigger launch pad so you can launch bigger vessels so what keep the money really what keep it all coming in we've got rcs sas turn that on for stability that's going to give us a stability assist and it should just go straight up baby we're going to tilt it to the side a bit we're going to tilt it to the side so it don't go straight up and come straight back down. So if it comes straight back down, it's going to be going fast. We're going to struggle to stop it. And we're potentially going to kill Jeb. So. Can we save with F5? Quick saving. Yep. Just in case, Jeb, I've got your back, bro. Three, two, one. Boom. <laughs> We can see the fuel on the bottom left. We're gonna tilt over a little bit here. Whoa, not too much, not too much. One over 10,000 to observe materials bay. We're gonna send it. No, we're not, we're gonna keep it. We could send it, but we're gonna keep it. No, we've got to send it because it's going to break off. Transmit data. You see the antenna coming out. It's going to transmit the data from the module. We've transmitted the data from the module. Are we doing it? We're doing it. You're gone. It's 
stabilize it Jeb stabilize it lad Don't even. F we, 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 oh yeah, I think we went high enough to cause a little bit of a heat here, so we need. They don't seem to have enough talk. So, when you're in a roll like this, what you have inside, you have um. You basically, have guidance units, reaction wheels. It depends on what type you put on, but they have their own talk of how much they can actually turn. You would eventually, if you only had low torque, you'd eventually your vessel would be that big. You wouldn't be able to turn it for the for the life. You don't matter what you did. Um, this has now got hardly any control. Really, it is just legitimately free falling. Would it? Twelve thousand meters. Ten thousand meters. <laughs> pop them high altitudes there. They're going to fully open by two and a half thousand meters. We're slowing down. Rapid. You can see there the, the, the speed. One fours. One threes. One twos. I mean, I think we want to hit the floor. Do you have crash tolerance? So again, you want to look at your crash tolerance to how fast you want to be in the deck and that. This should be like 5 meters per second in the end. We're going to get full deployment on these shoots any second now. Well, not any second, but in another 500 meters. Now oh, this is where it can, you can just time lapse it if you want. But you kind of have to be a little bit careful that you don't... Um, Time lapse too much. And there's the other shoot. And then we know that'll fully deploy at about fifteen thousand uh, about a thousand to fifteen hundred meters. And we did a pretty high flight there. We didn't really need the heat shield. And um you can almost guarantee that's because we took the science junior up. So that extra bit of weight from Science Junior, we're gonna see what that actually did to the vessel now. I got about 20,000 meters then, didn't it? We'll go... We'll, to, yeah. we'll get higher on this next flight. We're just going to have to wait for this to hit the deck. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. What did we get? We've broken a land distance record of 1,000 meters. We've broken a land distance record of 300 meters. We've broken an altitude record of 22 kilometers. We've broken a land distance record of 10 kilometers. So we've got a nice bit of ched from all that, man. Nice. We didn't have a mission. We didn't want running a mission. That's just like the space agency giving us money for achievements. Um, and it's just a way of progressing by just basically doing things in the game. So like I was saying, you don't necessarily need to go for a mission. We didn't... We took a mission. Break the atmosphere. But we've just got all that without completing that mission. We didn't escape the atmosphere that goal. What's going to be surprising is if we take the Science Junior off and use the same engine, it's highly likely we're going to breach the atmosphere. Um, we could check the science we've got and check where the guidance units are within the research. That's where we ended up, just off the coast. Barely got anywhere. We're at six meters per second, at 300 meters. This is, again, a tedious bit, because um, you're in flight. Not far off now, 180 meters, 180 meters. I mean, for anyone watching, 
very soon we can just go to a different game where I've cheated, got loads of money, got loads of vessels, stock vehicles, and we'll just throw a vehicle in orbit like SpaceX did, but I just want to finish this. In fact, I'll have to end the video because I want splash down. I'd have to end the video for that because I want this just as a little starter, really. We're going to recover the vessel, obviously. That's what they do. Did anyone see the SpaceX recoverer? Got six signs for that. We aren't we ain't got enough to do to do anything else. We need to break the atmosphere to complete that mission. And to do that, we're going to remove that and just throw that straight back on. And then we're going to remove them. We're going to launch that again. Without the uh, Science Junior. This will be completely different. This will get... This will break the height record again. Like, just taking that little bit of weight off. It will be unbelievable how much higher we get here. And we've got to double check that we're going in the right order. Because... <laughs> We don't want anything. Legitimately, if you had that break there below the engine now, it just pop off on the... It was like... We splashed into the ocean. I got 4,800 for splashing in the ocean. Let's go. Three, two, one. Boom. Look at the acceleration on this thing, man. 200 meters a second already. 300 meters a second. And there's no signs to do this time. So the dead weight's gone, mate. Instantly. Instantly. We ain't carrying that dead weight, mate. No. I'd imagine we just went faster. I mean, we 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 oh, we just, we literally just yeah, seven night. Uh, we went faster. So that little bit of movement is enabled by the torque that's within the capsule that we spoke about before once it starts hitting the atmosphere and um that's why it's bell shaped once it starts hitting the atmosphere it will just go now hopefully we will see it here we're right at the top of the atmosphere we're definitely gonna get a little bit of heat we're still climbing you can see at the top but although we're that direction we're actually still climbing So, I mean, we're going that direction. And we literally just hit our aperture coming down now. So, that little yellow marker is the, is the direction we're going. That's the direction we're traveling in. So, if we want to face the direction we're traveling in, we need to follow that. And the more we follow that, as long as we're on that, when the heat starts and the atmosphere starts, that will then keep us on it. This will um, this will be interesting. Look, once you pass your apogee, it literally just falls. Could blow up. Imagine the heat shielding's not good enough. All that research, <laughs> all that research we did, two clicks. You'll see though when you get to satellites, you can start scanning planets, start seeing what ores are there, send a vessel to go and mine that ore, get free fuel to get back, stuff like that. It's it's beyond just the vehicles and flying them and that. We can hear that atmosphere coming in here. Oh, my SGB. I've got to activate the Zoom wallet or something. I'm just going to wait for him to actually drop me. I've seen him in the in the flare wallet. Actually, didn't even get any flames. It wasn't going fast enough. But um, six thousand. We'll have the first shoot, sir. Please. 
And then probably I could have told that a little lower, really. June! Hi! Bye! Glad you're well. Good to, uh, good to hear from you. We'll speak soon. I'm going to end this soon. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit hungry, but I just want to go in enough that I feel like I've given people a good enough base to uh, begin to understand what they need to do to start getting into orbit and whatnot. We need to do some more science so we get the guidance control soon because we, we're risking Jeb, man. Every single flight, we're risking Jeb's life. Um, we don't we 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 don't really want to do that, do we? We don't want to we don't want to do that too much. Not we can't help it once we start sending them to space. Every mission, the life's going to be at risk. Every EVA, uh, the life's going to be at risk. But on Earth, I mean, and to send satellites up like they do now. Excuse me. Excuse me. They don't always send satellites or capsules and that to the International Space Station or to orbit these days with um, a man on the vessel or a woman on the vessel or a pilot. They um, they send it automated. So we're gonna look at how we're gonna automate our vehicle now. I don't I don't want to keep putting Jeb's life at risk while we're throwing early vessels up there because. You don't want to lose really, guys. I'll show you in a minute. If you want to hire more astronauts, it's going to cost you money. And each one you hire, the next one costs more. So we need to be a little... We need to be a little careful with killing them. Did we break the atmosphere? Did we get out of the atmosphere then? Did we not make it out? Oh. Don't say we didn't make it out. We probably would have going straight up. But straight up was dangerous. It's too it's dangerous for Jeb, man. I'm going to send it unmanned straight up. Straight up unmanned. Happy, happy Monday, Daniel. 1.4 million to your uh, D5 King. What, what? This is sometimes the most tedious bit, and it um, it can be difficult, but you kind of need to learn it because when you get to other planets, you've either got no atmosphere, an extremely thick atmosphere. I don't think there's many planets on this game that's actually got the same atmosphere as um, as Kerbal. Like say at first you'll probably want to just go to moons and stuff without an atmosphere. You don't have to worry about re-entry heat or, or exit heat or anything like that. There's no atmosphere. Get on and off them ridiculously easy. Once you start introducing an atmosphere, then you're introducing a lot of variables that can make shit go wrong. For example, NASA's never lost anyone in space. No one's been lost in space. They got they've died on the way there and on the way back. They died in the atmosphere. They wasn't in space when they died. So that's extremely interesting. That the most difficult part of space exploration and space flight is actually leaving a planet or getting on one. Recover the vessel. Get Jeb out of that seat. It's going up without him. And I'm sorry, Jeb, I understand that you might want to uh, see what happens, but it's going to be like, you'll have no pilot, you can't fly it. What? No pilot launch anyway, obviously. Got no remote guidance unit. We can't turn the RCS on. We can't turn the SAS on because there's no pilot inside to turn it on. This is going to be just a winged, a winged one, this. Let's have it. In fact, it's probably not going to let me because there's no pilot to even throttle on set. Throttle up and down. I actually can't. Interesting. Interesting. I'd have thought it would at least been able to launch it and it just go where it went. Research and development. We've got seven and a half. There's a reaction wheel. A 
advanced flight controls, stabilizer, RCS. Damn, this is a lot of science, son. I'll play it like that, yeah. Radial decoupler, aerodynamic nose cone, 18. Okay, okay, sorry Jeb. Sorry Jeb, but it's got to be done, bro. Um, right, so what I'm going to do now, I've got a little fuel tank here. So we're going to whack that on there. And then we've got a little engine with it. So we're going to whack, oh, no, we're going to whack that on there. And then we're going to go decoupler again. <sighs> sorry Jeb. I'm sorry, mate. We're going to get some fins because... We need some stability in this. I'm going to put fins on the bottom. Four of them. That'll just give us a little bit of stability on the way up. We've been so long. And again, like, let me show you now. So the torque, the pitch torque, the yaw torque, the roll torque. It's got a limit. Your vessel's got a limit to how much it can move. Um, variable to the reaction wheel torque. We haven't got any other form of command and control yet because we haven't done the research um so basically we've got parachutes parachutes we've got that brake all right that brake actually needs to be above that engine obviously that engine's gonna blow that that decoupler needs to be there and then that oh that engine goes first jeb jeb mate Get in there. If this goes wrong, pal, I'm sorry. But there was nothing else we could do, mate. <laughs> so what's going to happen here now? We're going up on solid rocket booster. When that runs out, we're going to ditch it. Jettison that mofo. And then we're going on to a little bit of liquid fuel to get us out of the atmosphere. Right? But what's going to happen? Are we going to get higher than the science pod did? Imagine how much, look at how much weight we've actually added above that tank now. Is it going to get anywhere near as high as it used to? Should there have been three of them? Is this going to be a disaster? We're going to turn the RCS on even though we've got none. And turn the SAS on even though it's cack. And we're going to go in three, two, one. Boom. Woo. So we're not going nowhere near as fast as we did before, are we? I mean, we're getting up there. We're getting up there, but... Have we got the torque to turn? And hold the turn? Has it, heck? Not even really. It's not got the torque to turn there, because there's too much atmospheric pressure. Now we can turn. Look at the height. It's mad, isn't it? So like we were saying before, we, when, you, when you do it without really doing any maths and you don't consider the weight that you've added, then you're not even going to get high, higher than you did than you did previously. So that vessel actually needed to, um, to be a little bigger, really. I'm going to try a time lapse here, and hopefully I don't kill, kill our Jeb. But... Um, Time warp. There's, so you see him going, and the Apogee starts coming down from going up. We at 32. Not even the ice we went. So this is where the rocket equation comes in. And you've got to carry enough fuel. You've got to carry fuel for the fuel. And all that malarkey. 
Gonna have to slow that down. It's gonna end up getting him killed. Gonna end up getting you killed, Jeb. We can't have that, lad. I will pop the parachutes later this time, no. I keep popping them a little early, to be honest. We're gonna hit them at exactly 2,700 meters. Because we're going fast. We're gonna see if that can slow us down. 27, 27, 27, 27. Four, one, four, uh, two, seven. It was still slowing down. We're, we're going rapid though. Boom, two, seven. So they're going to fully open straight away. Immense deacceleration there. That was lovely. 22 meters per second, as far as I'm aware, is still too much for this vehicle, this vessel. If that hit the floor, especially solid ground at that speed, it, it'd be done. We still need the other parachute to slow it down further but I've been I've been hitting them a bit early to be perfectly honest we didn't um, we didn't need to hit them so flaming early it's good to know once once your vessel's like in orbit and something like that you'll you'll just pass from one to the other but while you're on one here now like and it's in this situation you have to really watch it um there's no way of really getting back almost at 400 meters she's nearly down <laughs> That'll just open straight away. Drop it to 5 meters per second. For the last 200 meters. So yeah, if you time your parachutes a little better. You can decrease the time it'll take to descend through the atmosphere. The only thing is you have to be a little bit careful. Because although parachutes don't fully open until a certain altitude. They still... Uh, um, they still assist with the deacceleration um, drogue shoots and stuff like that like will will help you decelerate um, and they've got splash down baby but we've got a problem here haven't we we've, we've got um, we've got science buzzing we got science um I've been forgetting to do a crew report at Splashdown. Don't 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 forget to do your crew reports. It, um, it hurts you. It's hurt me now. And I've had an extra on you know, I know I've not got uh... Basically got nothing we can build horizontal to go to another part of the planet yet. What I'm gonna do is go a little OTT. I'm going a little OTT here, guys. This will be the last flight. This will be the last flight of the video. We're gonna we are we're breaking the fucking atmosphere here. I don't give a shit. We'll fucking see. Them blue ones are a big ass parachute, man. 41 diameter. Max safe deployment speed at home. So in Kerbal's atmosphere, approximately 2,000, uh, 264 meters per second. But that one will open at approximately 424 meters per second. So we are going with that bad boy. 
We're doing three of them. See how they went on dog. Let me just show you this here now, because we're gonna see how they're on cack. They're going on cack. We can move them about with the WSD keys and the rotation with E and Q. And if we hold shift, we can do it just a little bit. And make it just a look make it look just a little bit neat, do you know what I mean? Because it, it really did look pathetic at first. That's in the way of the hatch. And they're both going to be in the way of the hatch. If it bothers you, don't put them in the way of the hatch. <laughs> right. So, we've got to go to aerodynamics. We've got to put a heat shield in. Because I'm a little parried for Jeb, I'm putting two in. What? No, we're just... Right. They're not designed to go. I thought I could have just doubled up on them, but they weren't obviously not designed to do that. We want a decoupler, so that's just the end of it. Now, one of these last time got us nowhere. I'm still on three. I want it back to one. So we're going to put three of them. Oh, going to put three of them on. I'd say this is the final flight. I'm just going all out. If this don't make the atmosphere, something going on, mate. <laughs> I think he's only got a break, 60k. It gets to space. Another decoupler. So that's the second stage of the rocket. You could argue that the third stage would just be the return stage. It's a three-stage rocket. Now we're going to engines. We're going to use the big boy. But we're not stopping there, mate. Now nah, we're pushing this bad boy to orbit. So we're going to add them three on there like that. Boom. Right. But we're also going to go aerodynamics and put a, put a wing on them all. What did we just learn about control? Look at that. Holding control. That's E going that way. That's Q coming this way. Line them up nice. Tops a gash. We're going to go to aerodynamics. We've just seen. Fuck it. Can I have parachutes? Not that they need. Oh, that's dog. So we actually haven't got any structural aerodynamics for them. There's going to be an immense amount of drag. Should we just waste pods? Does it work? No. Is, is it? No. How much do they cost? 600? 600? Is that it? That, it's going to be worth it. Fuck it, we'll put parachutes on them as well. Fucking the parachutes, 422, yet the, the capsule itself is only 6 ton. Don't put people in them capsules, you bastard. Right, yeah, sweet. Make sure he's only in the top one. <laughs> Don't want them in the booster ones, they're getting ditched, mate. Um, right, that's the bottom stage. We've got four booster engines sending that up. We do not want parachutes. Oh, no, actually. Yeah, that's safe. Safe deployment, that. Yeah, that'll work. Then that's going to wait off. In fact, I want that to all happen at the same time. It's shit if it blows up. So what I mean, as that coupler blows, that engine also turns on. So it's like an automatic. It's a double. It's automatic. It just does it at the same time. Gonna launch oh launch pad can't support vessels heavier than 18 ton. Unable to launch. Save it. Exit. Launch pad. Seventy-five grand to upgrade. Yeah, do it. We just upgraded, baby. Launch the vessel that's on it. Oh, look at that pad now, mate. Mate. Look at that pad now. 
We've barely even done anything, but we're getting going now with look at the ventilation. That's gonna look lovely when it goes off. Now we're getting somewhere launch pad wise. The runway's still dog. RCS on, SAS on. We're going straight up off the boosters, and then we're gonna tilt once we're at 10,000 meters. And we're doing bits. Let's go in three, two, one. Last flight, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Go on, Jeb. Go on, lad. The aerodynamics looks nice. Looks nice. Powering through. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Keep stable. Stable. No, we lost it. That's where you have to be careful with a torque. No, no, the top. See, the top. I need to get that capsule back up to the top. There we go. Jeb. Sick save, Jeb. Sick save, me. That was epic, bro. That was an epic save, me. We're gaining speed still. We're gaining speed. We're gaining out of Oh, we're coming out of that, lad. Have it. Have it. What? He's going to space. He's going to space, mate. Jeb's going to space. There's no, there's no ifs or buts about that, mate. He's, he's, he's not even got going there yet. Look at the. Did you hear the music change? He's just got into space. We broke the atmosphere. We just passed the mission. Sixteen grand, nineteen grand. So we can incorporate, incorporate a bit of cost for the. For upgrade, really, aren't we? 35 grand, escape the atmosphere. Yeah. So that money, that, that 75 grand on the um, on the launch pad has just enabled us to, to, to go to new heights, mate. Go to new heights now. Jeb, you're in space, lad. You're in space, Jeb. First time ever, look. I just noticed it and so did they. No, we've broken a land distance record. And you notice we're still going up. So if you had to call the apogee here, that's getting it'll get it's getting it, that will get slower as it stops. That will get slower as it stops. That will get slower, and then it'll just stop and come back down. That's the apogee. So we made one thirty here easy. Like it did look like we wanted to go to one seventy a minute ago. That will drop. Yeah, we're hitting one seventy twos ish. One seventy twos, Jeb. 172s. Now, if we got up to this height with another engine that then blasted us at sideways up to what 17,000 miles per hour, we would then be in orbit. But we don't have another engine, so we're coming back down. Um, here we go. It's gone, it's slowing down. 150s. I mean, we're still going pretty fast. You can see. Um, the orbit speed as well if you watch the orbit speed as that slows down so is this but eventually we're going to hit the aperture and it's going to start speeding up again and obviously you know we can't safely deploy parachutes at the current speed so we need to hope that the, the bell shape of the bell shape of the capsule actually saves our uh, our Jeb's life, mate. Because we're still heading in that direction up. But we're at one seventies now, so we know it's gonna stop, don't we? We've looked it's we're not we're not reaching more than one seventy two. So in a minute very very soon look you can see it slowing 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 approaching the aperture the highest and furthest we're gonna go before we start coming back down boom that likely won't make five 
Yeah, it stopped. Goes the other way. So we're coming down now. And now we're speeding up again. So that would be a problem. On a, on, a, on a planet with no atmosphere. Now, if we was approaching a planet with no atmosphere. Now, we would need to use engines to slow down. Otherwise, there is nothing to slow us down before the parachutes. And is a parachute going to gonna, gonna work in a, in a vacuum with no atmosphere? Is it heck? It's not going to do shit. It's extremely interesting. He's 100% 100 in space, Jeb. You're coming in. You've got a hot ride here, lad. Got a hot ride here. This is... This is... This is... Um... So, structural integrity is compromised when you time-lapse it. So, I've not wanted to speed much up because I, really, I don't really want to kill Jeb. I want him to survive the space program. I want him to retire nice and old. I haven't been to a few planets, a few moons... Done his bit for humanity and um, knocked it on the head, called it a day. You can see the complex down there where we launched from. That's where we came from. This was basically what Jeff Bezos did. Shot a capsule up. Jettisoned it from his main engine. But the end, we just let ours drop. It actually comes back and lands. While the capsule continues flinging. And then it comes back into the atmosphere. Richard Branson we saw did it a little differently with his plane. And SpaceX with a civil, uh, with an inspiration for civilians. And orbit is actually, they was in orbit for a few days. Not just going up and coming back down. We are aiming for the orbit. We'll get there on the next stream. 100%. We've got this far on this stream. Down in me here a little bit. Right, so you see this icon here, atmosphere. We're still outside the atmosphere. I'm gonna start entering it between 100 and 60. So between 100,000 meters and 60,000 meters, we're gonna start entering the atmosphere, but it won't get a hotty hot and start burning. Well, it shouldn't, depending on what speed we're going, until we're a bit lower, say 30s to the 10s. And by the time it comes under 10,000, you want to be cooling down, chilling out, and slowing down to the point where your parachutes can then come in and you're at safe deployment velocity. Because this would be scary for our Jeb. Jeb. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Oh, the music's just gone off. Come on. The look of the speed, we're just constantly speeding up here. The, uh, the, the Kerbal's pulling us in. And we're just getting faster and faster and faster. And now, when we start hitting 30,000 metres, I would... Oh, yeah, we're doing it at 40. Night, that was earlier. Now, we need to be careful with the USD key here. Because if we turn it upside down, look at how hot the parachutes are on the left. They are on the brink of not working. We need to be extremely careful we don't flip this vessel... Otherwise, them parachutes taking the brunt of that are gone. They're gone, mate. Right? We're coming into 10,000 feet. We want to see it slowing. It's not slowed. We need the parachutes to come in. It's dead. It's dead, mate. Damn, that was close. We actually lost. The main chute, this could act well blow up. We lost it. We lost Jeb. You motherfucker. <laughs> right. So, what we're going to do... We're going to save Jeb. We're not having that. We're not going to stand for that. We're not going to do it too many times. 
But we are going to save him. We're just going to have a little look at the report. Jebediah was killed. So the heat shield splashed down hard and was destroyed. The radar mount drogue chute splashed down hard and was destroyed. Right, but what the swivel... Right, the parachute destroyed by aero forces and heat. So I don't know whether you noticed, but when we was coming in, one of the parachutes cooled down before the other. And it was that one we needed to hit first. So we needed the parachutes separate. We need it. We need, you, you can't have two parachutes. I should have noticed it at the beginning. It was a fuck up. It's a school by error. But you can't have two parachutes. If you, pick, if you know anything about computer coding, you imagine this is a change machine or a state machine. And it's just going off the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. So we're going to revert to assembler. And you'll see the two parachutes are in the same stage. That fucked me. Fucked me. What we needed was the three. First. And potentially... The other ones, can we remember which ones took the was deployable at the fastest speed? It is the ones we we used. But it's 424 meters per second. What's the crash tolerance 40 meters per second? So you can see you got all the information you need there really and when you start your own space program before you send Jeb up to such heights maybe um maybe have a think about the parachute situation because we, we we're going all out on on this next one now i am i'm gonna just block the arch get some get make sure the parachutes are definitely on it Save it. Could we tilt more? Just delete that because we came back. Launch. It is the last launch now. <laughs> this is the last launch. Oh, see that little bit of wobble then? We don't want that. What the hell, bruh? What's this done to me here now? I want them there. So again, we're double checking. We're do I got giddy, didn't I? You, do you can get giddy, man, and you just need to make sure that everything is being done in the order you want it doing me. RCS on, SAS on. Going to throttle up a little bit. And let's have it. Three, two, one. Final fly of the day. Don't forget, we had a, a, a crazy recovery as well, didn't we? But it came, we, we need to tilt, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want the yellow dot on the bottom there to come round to here, ideally, before we run out of fuel. Right, where's that getting us? 
180s. We've reached space. We've broken an altitude record of 70k. We're going to bin that. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's in space. Nothing can happen, man. But it can now. So, let's go and check it. Check one upside down. So again, for people not really into space exploration or into understanding it, into because like we've not really done much science yet, have we? Do you know what I mean? An actual looking into how it's actually done. How do they send a satellite here? How do they scan this, that, and that? It's um, it's tedious at first, un unless you use the cheats. But in using the cheats, it's hard to it, it's hard to appreciate. How difficult it can be to actually get to the levels that like SpaceX and Bezos and that are that now. I mean, we're still coming in at a, at a pretty violent angle here. I don't like it. I should have been turning way before that. Come on. Come on, Jeb. Come on, lad. If you die now, I'm letting you die, mate. It is what it is. So look, we got parachutes red. We need these. We need these at least orange, amber, before we set them off. We cannot set them off red. And we set that one off red last time, which is why it broke, which is why we couldn't get down to five meters below 14 meters per second. We need to be below 14 meters per second. And the parachutes, the parachutes, we're parachutes. We're looking for this. We're looking for this. There we go. Boom. Boom. Come on. Oh, and the other one's gone. Yes, we just. Yeah. 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 This is where Houston and everyone in the room is just on their feet, buzzing because they just know. They just know. Jimmy's looking at the 17.3 meters per second. There's only just over crash damage. We're going to wait that other parachute that has survived this time because we had it in a separate stage. And Jeb's about to come back to the surface after going to space for the first time ever. Now, we killed him. We did kill him. We can't not acknowledge that. First goal. He was dead. We have to be careful. Extremely careful. And, I mean, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that in the 50s and 60s, when the Russians just started throwing shit up for fun, a fucking dog, a monkey, a man, he was like, fuck it, get it in fucking space. I don't give a shit. It's like, whoa. Like, come on, man. Can we can we take our time a little bit? And it, I feel like that's what they've done since. <laughs> and it's enabled private companies to just go, do you know what, we'll do, we'll do it instead, mate. Leave it to us. Crew report, Jeb. I want a crew report from that, mate. 3.5 science. Lovely. Lovely. Recover the vessel. Oh, yes. Yeah. So how much money have we got now? Platform cost us a bomb. We've pretty much recurred, rec rec recurred the costs for the platform. We had 170 odd K when we, when we upgraded the launch pad. And we've got 170 odd K now. Difference is we're about to go and do some science, Bubba. We've got 30 science. Got to think careful about this. Do we want fuel tank, an engine, and big, big ass boosters? Or do we want aerodynamics, decouplers? Shit, the bed. All right, wait, wait. Let's do that one. So we need 20 science for that. I've only got 12 at the moment. 
Um, in the one we just got, we got decouplers. So obviously, when you've seen the space shuttle go up in the past and it had its big liquid tank in the middle that the shuttle was attached to, that it decoupled from. And then you had the solid rocket boosters attached to the tank that they decoupled from. Well, these are the decouplers to do that shit. Um, nice. Nice. We've got more crew reports and vessel recoveries now on Kerbin. Three reports from the launch pad. One report from water. So again, like you, the, the more you just go out and do crew reports. Um, one thing I want to do, just so we can show you, if you want to, it's not the worst way of cheating. Once you get on that, hold alt to get this up. Now, if you don't want to cheat, gaining science, gaining science, gaining funds, gaining reputation and maxing the facility and money and that, then don't. But the stock vessels are not really to be laughed at, right? We're not... It doesn't mean we're... Right, I'm going to see what happens here now. Do I get the parts for them? No, I'll do that another day because I actually don't want to ruin this game. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to do anything. I don't actually don't want stock vehicles. I'll make them myself. When I get the technology. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually coming back off that. But stock vehicles are there through the cheats. Which means if I went on here now and I had the stock vehicles activated. When it loads up. And I went to open. There'd be aircraft in here. See, there's my saved aircraft because I saved them in the other... In the other there's a vertical... Yeah, space plane vertical, space plane vertical. So they're the horizontal craft on the floor. They're the ones that are vertical, ready to go straight up. So if you click stock vessels and stock vehicles, you'd have rovers and shit in here. And you can put a pilot on a rover and drive out and go and get surface samples and send the data back and shit like that for extra science. At any moment you want the extra science. Um, you could legitimately just cheat and get yourself the science. You just saw then we can just plus five science if we wanted. So, we, I mean, for fucking ten science, for the sake of ten science, it's not like you're maxing your science out. You're just doing ten science to get a decoupler quicker. It's it's up to you how you want to play it. Play it either way. Um, but we completed a few missions here. We go to our active missions. Now we've got non-active We've got one more off the space agency uh, that's orbit curbing. We've done three missions for the space agency so far. We've done, we've launched our first vessel. We've gathered scientific data from curbing and we have escaped the atmosphere and got our astronaut back alive. I might add, we didn't the first time, but the second time we showed that if we just add more parachutes, might not be a bad thing to do that in the future. If I do have a catastrophic failure of a vessel, it might not be a bad idea to just go back in the same video and correct the vessel in the same video to see what we could have done differently to help the, the people on it survive, basically. And more parachutes have just got to be up there, innit? More parachutes every time, mate. More parachutes, more parachutes. Um, There isn't much more we can do except for trying... Get a vessel to orbit beyond that. Now we've got a couple more things here we can use, but that can be next time. 100% next time. So, yeah, get it saved. Pause menu. You don't even need a quick save, it just fucking saves. I'm gonna quit to the main menu. Um I did the cheats on this and maxed everything, I think, and I can't really remember. So that's like the, the that's the space station when it's maxed out, the research center and that. 
when you finally spent all the all the money on it and stuff. Now we've got a space station in orbit. It's actually um, a lab. There's a science lab on it. There's also a science test lab on the ground. We're going to build up to having stuff like this in the other game. Um, one interesting thing about this, it's an actual uh, an orbital scanner in a polar orbit. Which means over time, the whole planet spins. So, let's have a look at the space station there. Can the space station, in an equatorial orbit like that, can it get a picture of the North Pole? Can't, can it? It can't get a picture of the South Pole. But it can get a picture anywhere on the equator from an angle of right above it. And then anywhere else at an angle. But it can't go over the pole. Now, the polar orbit, you're going directly over the pole. So it's spinning underneath you as you're going over it. So you're actually on that orbit. You're actually seeing the whole planet, aren't you, over time? Over time, you see every bit of the planet on that orbit. We're going to fly that vessel. I just want to show a little bit of the science. A little bit better than it's been shown than... Mystery fucking goo. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to be like, oh, a oh, bit of mystery goo. Blah. So we're going to um, obviously need a pointed at the at the finger. Um, 3.3 seed. Oh. Toggle overlay. So there's the O on planet Earth. We are going toggle scanner GUI. We can actually face the planet and wait to pass where there's O. Like, we're actually looking here. We're scanning for O. Obviously, O was in, like, we would go down there. We could mine that and turn it into fuel legitimately. So, if we're going to look out to a planet, in the future, Joe, in the space program, we're going to think, we're going to go to that planet, right? But what I want to do in orbit, I want to build a space station that can send an autonomous vehicle down to the planet or moon, take some ore, mine it, process it, turn it into fuel, and then another vessel bring it back. And then we have an interplanetary fuel station in deep space. Um... This is taking a while, obviously, to get over that. Let me just... Because legitimately, once that... Once the satellite's over an area of ore... You're actually going to see it on here. He says. Here she comes... So each time I refresh, we're seeing more. We can actually mark out on the planet where the ore is. And where we want to land to collect it. Don't want to land there, do we? Don't want to land there to mine fuel. No. I'm fucking landing there for. There's no ore there. We want to land on these... Big ass pink spot over here, which means basically fucking oh, no matter what direction we go. It looks like there's a lake there. So you'd want a lakeside base. Mining ore on Kirby. But that's the only planet I've mapped up to now. I built that satellite. So let's go back round to it. Let's fly it again. And we can close that. So we constructed the vessel. It's basically, it's got a science compartment, so we can open this and we can do shit in here. It's got a nuclear battery. And it's got stuff that it can't even use. Atmospheric analysis, it can't because it's not in an atmosphere. Um, we're in zero G. So there's an um, accelerometer in zero G. We can log seismic data, but again, we're not really on a planet. Again, like Kirby, mostly water. So, to, for this to see the ore, if this was on a rover, 
this could do what this is doing and find ore on the planet as it as it drives over it but at the moment it's currently too high the mystery goo we've clearly already looked at it um Gravimax, that is very interesting. Gravitational detect, the, the gravity data, 0.4 meters per second. Fascinating. So there's the scanner for the ore on the front. So we had to put this scanner on. Um, and then obviously through this one, we can view it. So if you have one without the other, you can't get this effect that we've got on here now. You need both of them scanners on your satellite to actually be able to show you what ore is on the planet. I think it's pretty cool, that. And I think it's a good little... Um, it just shows where we're heading regarding the planetary science and to ore, to, to find ore and mine it, get some fuel and be able to travel. Because if we zoom out, you can see... If we were to say come to Jewel, Jewel's got a hell of a lot of moons. It's got a water moon, it's got rocky moons, it's a gas giant. There's loads of science we could do with the gas giant and all its moons. So if we wanted to go there, and but then I'd be able to have any vessel go there and any vessel come back as efficiently as possible, we're going to need a fueling station there. So we'd need to go to one of the moons, set up where there's ore, which means we need to send one of them satellites. So what we'll be doing on the um, on the other career that I was just on and I've just started, we'll be building this satellite as soon as we can. We'll be putting it in orbit of Kerbal like we have just for the buzz. And then um, the next one will be going to Jewel. It will be going to Jewel because we could also put a fueling station in orbit in Aircart West. So the less fuel we use, in fact, We'll put a fueling station on Minmus. So the journey to Jewel will actually be leave, Earth, leave Kerbal Orbit, get to Minmus, refuel, and then off to Jewel. And then mine some fuel at Jewel. Anyone can go and come then. We'll have two uh, fueling stations, and we'll need to learn how to, um, how to dock in space as well, which will be in, an interesting episode. Docking in space. So yeah. Basically I need to be on this one. And we're going back to the space then. Space then. Oh. So yeah. That's pretty much what it's like. Let me just show you in here as well now. Just so you know what I meant. I don't know if it's going to give you the materials. To actually build them. Or if it will just give you them. Even though you've not got the materials. So one or two things is going to happen if you add the stock vehicles. You're either going to have all these stock vehicles, but you're not really going to be able to build one. Load it. Now, I'm not sure if that would load if you didn't have all these in here. I just don't, I honestly just couldn't really tell you. But if you was to launch it, it's going to enable you to drive around the local area of Kirby. And this is basically, a, there's mine over there. We're going to visit the science lab, actually. Why not? Why not? Let's go and visit the science lab. So this, just a little heads up of what we're heading towards, really, in the other game. Because it did get a little tedious then with them launches, and it got a little boring. Whoa, brakes! That orange icon there is the brakes. So I have actually whacked the brakes on there. Just took a while. That is a habitat. That's just a habitat where someone can live. Alright. Let's take the brakes off. Let's drive over here. Have I actually got a pilot in this? Or is this driving autonomously? Oh, brakes. Okay. Brakes. There's the science lab. You see the telescope. Um, that one's a greenhouse. So we've got a greenhouse, a science lab on, on the planetary service. We can actually move these. If you see the wheels, it can deploy wheels. It lifts up and it will drive away. Controllable from that end. 
Um, so yeah, basically that that's that's a vehicle I built, and the one on the right is a stock stock vehicle. But again, you might you might want to get yourself a few stock vehicles. It's um, you could legitimately drive into the mountains and get samples. It would be extra science. So again, if you could, it's it's all depends on how you want to play it, how often you want to cheat, if you're going to cheat at all, and if you're going to do it properly. We're just going to hit the brakes on him, so he has stopped. It's worth noting. You can't come back to the space center until your vehicle's considered stopped. That's either in orbit traveling between planets i think it's actually if it's just not accelerating or decelerating if it's maintaining speed you can come you can change the screen if not it will keep you on it until it comes to a stop or reaches an orbit so um i'm, li I'm just going to leave that vessel out socket space space center and on that note i'm going to get some food so for anyone who has watched today thank you anyone who watches in the future i hope you've um, enjoyed it learn a little bit about the game and whatnot it's very very exciting at the moment what's going to happen with privatized space travel i think we are on the brink of truly being where people expected to be not long after the 80s if it was not for the challenger or disaster I feel like NASA would have been a bit further along with sending civilians to space and it would have pushed the private sector even more. Nonetheless, we've got there in the end anyway and it is an extremely exciting time if you're interested in space, space flight, space exploration, space science, planetary science, whatever. It's extremely exciting times and this game slash simulation does nothing but help the imagination and expand the imagination by playing it. It's literally just problem after problem after problem that needs to be solved. Or you can just go and explore and have a little bit of fun. It's entirely up to you. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I'm getting back to my studying. Back at school tomorrow, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'll keep you posted on that. Do maths and English again, then we're going to do science again, and then we'll go to university to so hopefully do aerospace engineering and actually get into this and rocket science and building spacecraft legitimately. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you on the next one. We love rockets. We love you, baby. Peace.